Good evening, good evening, my friends. Today, today, yeah, it's been a long time since I've shared, and life has been crazy, and I'm adapting to having three children and uh, a ministry and uh, a business that is not not that small of a business anymore and uh, trying to juggle those things and, and balance all this stuff and and figure it out. But this is important. So I want to get to the point. though. I was listening to something and, you know, it was Leonard Ravenhill and he was talking and it was in the song. But he said that that you cannot impress God. And when I heard that, it, it just struck me in my spirit because I don't believe that that's true. Now, I, I believe it's hard to impress God because he knows everything. Um, but, but I don't believe that we should have this perception of God that he's impossible to impress. Because if he's impossible to impress, that means he's impossible to please. He, he's impossible to, you know, make happy. He's impossible, you know, to be a good father really is, is what that implies. Because a good father is impressed by his children and proud of his children and, and takes pride in them. Um, so we got to find balance, right? And, and to be honest with you, I'm, I mean, I used to listen to Leonard Ravenhill all the time. I think he's, a, he was a powerful man of God, but I think that he, you know, his mission was, was, he was dialed in and, and, and he was on the holiness train. And I think that he, um, I think that he did not bring things into balance. So, but that being said, I wanted to show you in scripture that you can impress God. Okay. Second Samuel seven it says, now when the king lived in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan, the prophet, see, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, go do all that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. But that same night, The word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling in all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel. Did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people? Israel saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? And then he goes into speaking to David and, and like encouraging David and like giving David this exceeding great and precious promise about the lineage of his household. But I say that to say, God is, is saying to David, he's like, man, how did, I didn't tell anyone to build me a house. You know, I've been dwelling in a tent, moving about from place to place. And I never said to anyone to build me a house. But now David has this idea to build me a house and he's impressed by it. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm telling you that that's what is the message that is being portrayed here is that God is telling Nathan and then speaking to David, like, Hey, you know, like I've never even mentioned to anyone that I would like a house built. Uh, but now you're saying you want to build me a house. That's awesome. Okay. And then he goes into telling David that like Jesus is coming from his seed and that, (laughs) you know, the Messiah is going to be, you know, you know, his son, uh, his, his literal only begotten son is going to be born from the lineage of David. And this all springs from, I mean, this circumstance where David impresses God and says that he wants to build them a house. So that being said, it's interesting that that's in there that way. And I don't, you know, cause obviously God knows everything, but there's something about what we believe and what we say and what we think sometimes God is pleased with those things, you know, like he somehow can be impressed by our thoughts, even though he knows them before we even think them. He still is impressed by it because he's a good father. And uh, I don't know, but take it with a grain of salt. But I don't agree with Leonard Ravenhill to say that you can't impress God. 
and this is why. Good night. Hopefully, I will see you again soon. But just be encouraged because you can impress God, and he is impressed with you if you have faith in him. Amen.